Let's quickly uh, understand how we geolocate uh, the continents. We said India moved and uh, Pangaea broke up and continents moved around and so on and so forth. So we need two things. When they were at the location that we are claiming they were at, how many million years ago, and the latitude or longitude where they were found. Okay, so. The dating part we have seen uh, uh, early on in the first chapter where we said uh, isotopic uh, chemicals like lead uh, uh, so on can tell us uranium, can tell us uh, the date of a particular rock for example. Uh, you can look at the amount of uh, uranium, amount of lead and you can say how long it has been around. To geolocate uh, you can look at the magnetic uh, properties locked into that piece of rock on that continent. So you go to Australia or India, find old rocks and then you try to see where they were in the past. How does it work? Basically if you think about a magnet, uh, the magnetic lines have a high angle uh, at higher latitudes towards the poles and they have flatter angles at lower latitudes. So there is a latitudinal dependence of the magnetic line. So if you find the magnetic property of a piece of rock, date it and then you can use the magnetic lines to say uh, at what latitude it was at that time. That's how we can figure out how India started moving when it reached Asia and where it's still headed. Okay, that's a very brief description but I think it's uh, fairly clear. The other thing we can do with the models uh, which we will see more into exactly how these models are built. Uh, we can rearrange the continents in the models as we want and we give it the energy from the Sun and we can see how the uh, ITCZ changes, how the winds change, how the equator to pole temperature gradients change, how the ocean circulations change, how the winds change, etc. Uh, etc. Et okay, so these are useful to look at how ocean circulations, these upwelling regions or shelf areas shown in green uh, and the continental movement directions are shown in these uh, purplish arrows and so on and so forth. So going from uh, 175 million years ago you can see Mediterranean or the Tethys is still there. Uh, this is 160 million years ago, 100 million years ago. You can see pieces beginning to appear and you can see why Alfred Wegener guessed that continents must have been uh, clustered together before because Africa and South America and U uh, Europe and uh, North America kind of fit together like a jigsaw puzzle, right? So this allows us to also uh, kind of infer how life evolved, how algae colonized land, how they developed the structure uh, to stand up, the lignin, the hard material to stand up. In the ocean they float around, they do photosynthesis. On land they have to set roots to compete for light and to put their seeds into the air to be or pollen to be uh, taken away. They have to grow. They would have modified the atmospheric circulation by growing. So they have plants with different heights. Uh, you have plants with different uh, sizes of leaves depending on whether they are trying to save water or just capture more light and so on and so forth. So past climates can be uh, reconstructed using models but you have to first know what the continental configuration was and we do that with uh, isotopic dating methods, radiometric dating methods and geomagnetic uh, fields uh, and lines using these uh, approaches. So obviously very powerful techniques but you have to know how much uncertainty there is in the estimates you are making of the timing of the continent, location of the continent and so on. Plus the models uh, have to know what was the radiation level at that time. Sun's radiation was not always at the same level that it is now. When solar system formed it was 30 percent less luminous. The sunlight, sun's power was 30 percent less. So there are other issues of how water would have remained in liquid form if so much less energy was coming in. What was the main greenhouse gas? Because remember 
in the beginning there were still no oxygen, no plants, uh, CO2 was different, methane would have been more, maybe ammonium and so on and so forth. So there is lots of very interesting details in the Earth's history and I have series of lectures on that on YouTube that you can find if you are more interested in that. Uh, but here we will go back to uh, more recent climate change and global warming but uh, you should know these uh, details of how past climates are reconstructed and how models are used to reconstruct uh, past climate variability and change.